All right, so we've got another wiki how here. We've got how to have a pleasant facial expression. You know, it's a good life skill to have. You can't blame someone for wanting a pleasant facial expression. And they've got a little, they've got an intro paragraph here. Having a pleasant facial expression is a small change that can have a very positive effect on your life. You used the wrong effect. It doesn't really matter, but still. It can be the difference between making friends, getting a job, starting a relationship, or getting help throughout the day. I don't know why you only get one, like, you know, it can be the difference between making friends or getting help throughout the day. I don't know which one I would choose, like, of all four. No, I do. Getting a job. In order to have a pleasant facial expression, you have to first be aware of your face. After that, you can make small changes to make yourself have a pleasant facial expression more consistently. This article is basically just, like, a real version of that one Talking head song, right? I forget what it's called. Let's dig a little deeper before we get into the actual article. First off, we have 25 co-authors. I don't know how much each person contributed, but that still seems like an awful lot. We've got a nice um, success story here. It helped me develop a smile that's not a one millimeter gap in my mouth, a short duck bill, or just straight up horror movie creepy by getting me to add all that together. So your smile is a one millimeter gap, a duck bill, and a horror movie smile at the same time? That sounds unpleasant. I always faff about with my hair, so I will have a haircut and I will be great. I don't know what faffing about with your hair means either. I don't know what this person's talking about in general. But let's let's finally get into the article. So method one is being aware of your face. Of course, this is a very important step. If you don't know you have a face, you can't make your facial expression pleasant. But I don't know what's going on in the picture, like... I guess it's the art style, but to me, it looks like she has a different facial expression in, like, reality than she does in the photo around her lips, specifically. No, like, look, I just noticed. Her left eye is facing to the right on the photo, like she's looking at something off screen. And in the drawing, both eyes are looking straight into the camera, so... Maybe she's not using her camera, though. Maybe that's just a photo. Yeah, I mean, when you take a photo of yourself, you normally use the inner camera, which this phone clearly has, so, like... Yeah, I guess she's just showing a photo of herself. But anyways. And step one of being aware of your face is know how your face naturally rests. Which, I mean, the woman in the drawing doesn't, because she has the photo of herself facing out instead of in, so she can't see it. But they have a couple of rhetorical questions bundled with that point to um, help you work through it, I guess. The first is, would you be comfortable starting small talk with someone who shared your expression? And first off, I'm not really comfortable starting small talk with anyone. And even if I was, I don't know if it's just me, but I find people with, like, an overly positive outward default expression can be kind of, like, off-putting in a little way. Not, like, in a resentful way or anything, just in kind of, like, a being intimidated by their extroversion kind of way, you know? If you're on a bus and asked to introduce yourself to someone, would this expression be one to interact with? Which is essentially the first question, just much more uncomfortable. Like, being on a bus and being forced to introduce yourself is not the kind of situation I would imagine if I wanted my facial expression to be more positive. And step number two is ask other people. First off, this woman has an unpleasant facial expression, but it's more because she has kind of a weirdly small face. Like that one American nut job, dude. I know that's kind of mean to say, but it's just a drawing, right? Like, I know WikiHow pictures are usually traced off of stock photos, but the art style and quality of the drawings is such that it's usually not a good indication of how attractive, I guess for lack of a better term, the model is based on how their WikiHow doppelganger looks. 
Anyways, asking other people is like not a good strategy, I think. Like how are you gonna do that? You're gonna ask people, hey, is my face horrid? Is it unpleasant? Like I don't think you're gonna get an honest answer. They're gonna probably be thinking that you're fishing for compliments or something of the like rather than looking for an honest answer. And they bring this up in their paragraph I just saw. And their solution is to ask strangers. So if your goal is to have a more pleasant presentation, I don't think introducing yourself by asking people if your face looks weird is a good way of going about that. Also, I'm learning to draw myself, so I can't really comment too much, but look at her hand. That's... I don't even know what is, like, off about it. It's just something... I don't know. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to take the time to find out. Step three is learn to use the muscles of your face. Is your face an unmoving mask? A cold, unpleasant statue carved into marble? Maybe try learning how to actually use your face. Like, this advice is best suited for people with, like, psychosomatic facial paralysis, I guess. Your first step in the paragraph is to learn to wiggle your ears. I don't know if that would work or not. If, you know, if you're meeting someone, you get a little awkward, you don't know what to say, so you just start, like, wiggling your ears. That might turn them around on you. You know, list other important tasks, like controlling your eyebrows and your eyes and your mouth. Also, for another reference, this photo, isn't there, like, a, some punk album with a similar cover to like this drawing. I'll try to find it after the video and put it up on the screen. If nothing shows up, then I was just delusional. Step four is know your nervous habits. I don't know why they went with a really aggressive like ant's eye view for this drawing. Like that's not the right term. It's got like a fish eye, I think. Either that or my like proportion is off my sense of scale for this drawing, but step four is know your nervous habits, which this one's actually a pretty solid piece of advice, like just kind of learning to manage ticks and that sort of thing. On the other hand, they don't really tell you much here, they kind of just leave it up to your willpower, which I don't think that's how ticks work, but after this I guess you could go to another article and or somewhere else and like learn how to control ticks. They do have the suggestion of using hypnosis to remove them, which I don't think is always going to be the most practical solution. I wonder how many people like go into those like therapeutic hypnotist places and ask them to just like fix their face. Method two is making changes. I like how serious this guy looks, like he looks like he's been really going through it, you know, this is the big thing holding him back that he's finally identified and he's gathering up the resolve, you know. Step one is practice at home. Look in a mirror and practice your facial changes at home. This, I wonder if this is meant for like people from outer space learning to blend in as humans, because so far I haven't seen a whole lot in the way of, like, concrete advice that also wasn't terrible. I should read before I say these, like, the immediate next thing I see here is some actually pretty good advice, like, like, imitating a smile by holding a pencil in your teeth. I know that's a, um, a technique I think is used in speech pathology. A long E forces a smile. That's why they make you see cheese for photos, isn't it? Like, this here seems like actually sound advice, but it's kind of worryingly deep into the article. I mean, I guess we're a third of the way through, but still. Step two is look engaged, with their further advice being having a tilt to your head. You know, like you're a dog looking for a squeaky toy or something. And they also have to not check your watch or your phone. Because as you know, you can't have a facial expression and check your phone at the same time. Step three is soften your eyes, which I don't know what that means. You want to have eye contact and crease your eyes. Creasing your eyes is different from squinting. 
It's a good thing to practice in the mirror. The most inviting eyes are fully open yet relaxed. It doesn't, I still don't know what creasing your eyes means, like, is it a less intense squint, or is it like the opposite of squinting? The guy in the drawing kind of has normal looking eyes, so I don't know what direction they're kind of expecting you to go, like, like if you're squinting your eyes subconsciously, or if you're holding them open too wide. Maybe that's why they use the word creasing. Like, just pick something ambiguous so your mind fills in whatever it needs, you know? Step four is keep your mouth relaxed. I like how they have the DreamWorks smirk as they're drawing. Like, I don't know how many people would consider that as their relaxed, like, default facial expression. Other than, like, annoying main characters of children's media. The advice here is just to smile. But they spell it out for, like, people who have never smiled before. I don't know what's up with that again. Step five is become pleasant within. I don't know if whatever's happening in this photo would classify as part of becoming pleasant within. Like, the guy on the left certainly doesn't have a pleasant facial expression. The person on the right does, but I think they do at least one thing. They don't. Whoever did the art for this didn't give anyone lips, so it's kind of hard to tell at times. I think from context, the person on the right is supposed to be the one with a pleasant facial expression, the one that's pleasant within. But I don't know if the events happening in this photo would make me more pleasant within, you know? Alright, and method three is being comfortable and smiling. I think this guy is a little too... The guy in this photo does not seem to be in a good place. Like, when your header is being comfortable, I wouldn't use this photo. Step one is smile when appropriate, and they don't really explain that. They talk about some weird sciencey stuff regarding smiling. I don't know whether it's true. They're saying that when you smile, you restrict blood flow to your sinuses which cools the blood leading to your brain, which makes you feel better. I don't know. Like, the whole circulatory system is complex enough that could be true, but smiling makes your nose cold, which makes your brain cold, is not a very compelling argument to me as someone who doesn't know a whole lot about anatomy, biology, physiology, however you want to call this. They they do have a citation, but it's to the New York Times. An article from 1989, mind you. Like, I don't even know how there's articles on the internet from 89. It must be an archival thing. But, like, if that's your best source, it just seems a bit fishy to me, you know? Step two is focus during uncomfortable situations. Which, this whole method so far seems to boil down to only smile when you're supposed to smile. Which, I mean, is sound advice, I guess. Step three is have confidence in your appearance. And the paragraph here goes more into, like, not having tics. But this guy, I don't know, this guy seems a little too confident for me. Like, he looks like the kind of guy that would come up to me in a mall trying to sell me, like, a phone or something. Like, just by that kind of association. If your goal is to have a pleasant expression, I don't know if that's the avenue you should be going for. Oh, so this guy's hand is also really screwed up. Like, I know what they're going for, but it really looks to me like he doesn't have a thumb and he just has, like, four stubby little fingers. And that's the end of the article proper. We also have how to smile with a very disturbing photo. Uh, the answer apparently seems to be surgery. Isn't that like a creepypasta or something? They have how to smize, which I don't know what smizing is, and I don't think I want to know. It sounds like something you'd have to clean up, like there's a bunch of smize on the floor. I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's everything. This video is a little shorter than I was hoping. 
I think I'll have a break coming up sometime in the future here where I can record a bit longer videos. This one, I kind of just ran out of material here, like that's the end of the article, but hopefully this went alright.